All right, here is the second VX7 subwoofer, Miller and Kressel, serial number 504538. Same thing as last time. I do have a speaker connected to it. Let's power it on and see what happens. And once again, I get a dull thud, which is what I really want to hear. Let's go ahead and test DC voltage across those capacitors. I'm expecting to see about 35 volts each. So I do have 35 volts there and negative 35 volts here. Yep, absolutely perfect. We'll go to the AC range and look for any ripple. 0 0.06 all the way up to 0.1. That's pretty good. And 0 0.06 once again. Pretty happy with that. Like last time, let's put an audio signal into it and see what happens. Okay, signal generator is connected. I do have a 100 hertz audio tone going into it. And it sounds perfectly fine. The output might be a little bit low because I haven't changed the input level from the signal generator. And on the last one, when I turned it up all the way, which is right there, I definitely had much more audio coming out of this unit. So I think we're gonna have to check these caps. I know one of them is kind of in the equalization feedback loop. The other ones are in the power supply. We'll test them all, find out if any of them might be bad like last time. And just because that pot does test good, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a squirt of the Deoxit F5. Thank you X-Ray Tony B for recommending this. Worked absolutely perfect on the last pot. So yeah, let's dive into this thing. Let's go ahead and pull the board off of the aluminum heatsink. Remove the STK chip, which I'm sure is going to be another STK080, and test all the caps, replace as necessary. I forgot we should check the Molex connector. This one actually sounds good. I'm not getting any crackles or hisses or anything out of this one like the last one, but we'll still go ahead and retension it and resolder all the pins just to be on the safe side. Okay, got the board out of the unit. Let's go ahead and pop the STK chip out of it. I like these because they are socketed. And once again, this one is an STK080. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and check the caps. So once again, these two right here are the 220 microfarad caps. These three right here are the tens. So 0 0.08, 0 0.09, that one is an excellent health. 0 0.07, 0 0.09, once again, excellent health. And this one will not even read. That one will not even read. And that one reads 9.2 ohms. So definitely going to go ahead and just refill all the capacitors on this unit to be safe. Let's go ahead and check the two main filter caps on the rectifier board connected to the transformer next. So once again, I just want to make sure that I have zero volts on these capacitors or close to zero. And I have about two tenths of a volt on each capacitor. So that's not going to damage my capacitor checker. And I'd like to see about 0 0.02 ohms maximum. So first I'm just going to verify that I am at zero and I am. And I see exactly 0 0.01, 0 0.02 on that one. And once again, 0 0.01, 0 0.02 ohms on that one. I am perfectly fine with those, hopefully lasting many more years. I do believe these are the original capacitors. There's the date code right there, 8840. That's the 40th week of 1988 when these things were installed and they're still in absolutely perfect condition. So just like previously, always mark either the negative or the positive lead, your choice. I mark the negative ones just to make sure I can get these caps back in in the same orientation because remember sometimes the silk screening lies.
And we'll go ahead and check the new caps just to make sure that they're in good working order. First, a 220, and I'm seeing 0.06. I'm very happy with that. The other 220, 0 0.06 again. Excellent. And now the tens. First one is 0.49, so half an ohm on that one. That's great. Next one, 0.48. Perfectly fine. And lastly, 0.48 once again. So I'm very happy installing these Nichicon and Kimmet replacement capacitors in this unit. I think they're going to serve the customer very well. Once again, they are all 105 degrees Celsius rated caps, as opposed to the old ones that came out, which were all 85 degree Celsius caps. Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark this pot so I can shoot some F5 into it. Get it back in the same orientation, hopefully. And we'll go ahead and clean the other pot at the same time. All right, so all the capacitors have been changed. I went ahead and tried to observe the original footprint and orientation as Miller and Kressel had designed this thing. Went ahead and cleaned both pots, soldered the Molex connector pins, and we just gotta pop the S2K back into it and get it ready for reassembly at this point. I love these that have a socket, makes it so nice. I've never had an issue with uh, connectivity with the socket, by the way. All right, we'll go ahead and retension the Molex connector right now. Just add a bit of pretension. Don't worry about it if it's like not perfectly round. Once the pin goes into it, it's gonna squish it back out again. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Just gently bend these pins in just a little bit to add just a little bit of extra pretension to them. Like I said, don't worry about it. Once you plug it together, the pins are gonna force this thing back round and make better contact than ever before. Okay, all back together and powered up. Let's go ahead and just give it a test with the 100 Hertz audio at this point. Definitely get more audio than we did before. So I have not increased the signal generator audio level. It's still at the exact same point. Let's feed some audio into it now. See what it sounds like. Okay, here we go. Got some copyright free audio going into it. My little six inch speaker just can't handle the bass. It's actually shaking the video lights. But down here, it sounds really good. Anyhow, that's it. The second Miller & Kressel VX7 subwoofer. Just needed a change of caps. Went ahead and cleaned those pots even though they weren't really bad, but better to be safe than sorry. Anyhow, I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the Miller & Kressel VX7. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. 
You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Once again, everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. All right, just like last time, a little bonus footage. Let's go ahead and check all these caps. Now these are BEC capacitors. Not quite sure who that actually is, but once again, 85 degree rated caps, 85 Celsius. And that one reads 0.1 ohms. The other 220. Uh, 0.12. So the new ones are definitely better. And now for these little guys, they'll probably warm up as I touch them. Try not to touch them too much. 11 ohms on the first one, 10 ohms. And I can't get anything on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it in my hands and see if it will come down in resistance as the temperature rises. Yeah, I'm not getting anything on it. Leads are good. Yeah, that thing is totally open. And nothing on that one as well. Let me try to heat it up a little bit. Make a little bit of friction. Now let's see if we get something. Nope, absolutely nothing. And if I touch the leads, we're good. But no reading whatsoever. Now these are ECI capacitors, 10 at 25 volts, Q388, probably uh, 88th, something third week of 88, possibly, because this was new in 1988. And any date code on this one whatsoever? No, nothing to identify the date that it was manufactured. No stamping on the end or anything. Anyhow, those little caps, they're toast. Changed them all just to be safe. Thanks for watching the bonus footage. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.